strong expectations that the Fed could start tapering next month following good jobless and housing numbers. What impact will this have on risk appetites and liquidity flows in Asia? Well, I think you know, the, the broader issue still remains that developed markets or mature economies uh, have been outperforming emerging markets and Asia included uh, throughout uh, the course of, of 2013. And you know, broadly speaking, we don't really see any major catalysts uh, for this to change. Now, in terms of the very short term, uh, marginally better news out of China uh, does suggest that we could have a bit of a, a boost, a bit of a bump uh, upwards for emerging market assets, also Asian assets as well. But really, longer term, I mean, it's the, it's the resilience, it's the strength of U.S. earnings growth and the underlying changes in Japan, uh, which are really overshadowing uh, the rest of Asia and emerging markets in general. So this, this trend we really think is going to persist, broadly speaking, through to the end of the year. What do you make of the earnings season so far in China, with the biggest companies already reporting? It, it's, a, it's a certainly it's a it's a reasonable uh, earnings season, uh, but you know the the general um, you know issue that international investors have is is this idea of trying to sort of gauge what exactly is going to be the low point in terms of Chinese GDP growth. There's a lot of attention, a lot of concern around that that seven percent handle, and whether or not you know also on a quarter by quarter basis will we actually be dipping below that. So individual company uh, earnings certainly in certain sectors, for example, I would definitely highlight an extremely resilient gaming sector, um, you know, on a standalone basis is certainly very good. But though I think the way that the bulk of international investors are approaching this is that single company news is going to be insufficient to, to change their overall stance that this year is really about developed markets as opposed to emerging markets, including also China. How about Japan? How are you advising investor there after a hefty run-up on the Nikkei 225 index since Abenomics? Yes, Japan remains our strongest call in an Asian context. I think that you, 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 the, the, critis, the, the critics or the, the uh, perpetual uh, Japan bears, they, they point to uh, some uh, recent data points which have been uh, disappointing. The GDP was not that great. But I think if you look beyond this and some more, much more important uh, leading indicators, uh, will they actually suggest that consumer confidence in Japan is rising, that will help push retail sales, that will help lift Japan out of this deflationary uh, you know, struggle that has been the case for the last 20 years. So although you know, the, the market has done very, very well, we, we stick to uh, a yen a weakening forecast, about 105 against the U.S. dollar on a 3- and a 12-month horizon. That does indicate that the, the, the Nikkei should rise from here. Our target on the Nikkei is 15,500.